Um, what a, uh, a, a robust session we've had. Um, it's going to be very hard to summarize it, and we've only got, you know, uh, five or so minutes for um, questions and answers. Um, but it seems to me that overall, um, uh, these uh, credentialing systems are can be made lawful. They can be lawful, and they can be um, uh, uh, they can be secure and private, and not violate existing um, um, privacy rules. Um, but there are a whole lot of questions beyond that that the audience has asked and that I have um, for myself. Um, so let me just, you know, um, start with um, a question about that most of you have raised, um, which is the checkerboard, you know, that, that we have, you know, anybody who's listened to the, these three beautiful um, uh, uh, lectures um, will come away thinking, well, the, var the variation and in inconsistency is jaw-dropping. Um, so, so first question is, you know, could we make a more uniform system where we didn't have so many dizzying rules? Is there room for international law? Could the international health regulations regulate some of this um, or a new pandemic treaty? Um, so who would like to jump in on that? Um, why don't we, I'll call on you then. How about you, Glenn? <laughs> I, mean, I think the answer is we can definitely get a lot more consistency, but I have some doubts about whether the political will is there, right? So certainly within the United States, uh, there are steps the federal government could take to have consistency both between its executive branch agencies, as Professor Tridoff mentioned, but also with the states and our federalism. But I'm not holding my breath to be perfectly honest that that's going to happen. Yeah, you know, one of the questions also asked, you know, we've talked about Europe and, and the United States, um, but what is the situation comparable in Latin America and Asia? Um, is anybody aware of, 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 of the Latin American or Asian context? I think that um, anybody want to jump in on that? I can speak to the Latin, uh, the Asian context, I should say, which is to say, I think that actually they're a little bit ahead of us in many of these things, both in terms of, you know, again, Asia is a big place to be clear, but there are the main power centers in East Asia. I think we are seeing uh, enthusiasm for tracking, enthusiasm for information to an extent that I think would probably strike Americans as probably not exactly what they want. But Latin America, I can't speak to. Maybe one of my other colleagues can. So Latin America is um, really behind. Um, there, a lot of countries are not letting people leave or letting people enter. Um, it's a very difficult situation in Latin America right now. And of course, in Brazil, um, there is a, a, a populist prime minister whose um, approach is very similar to that of the last administration, which is no masks and no mandatory vaccination. Um, so again, a long way to go. Um, you know, I, I, I do want to say that um, the, the CDC authorities um, have been challenged in a bunch of places. They're really in serious need of review. I know nobody relishes the idea of going to Congress on this. Um, but if you just look, I didn't have the chance to talk about the, uh, the eviction moratorium case. Um, and just last week, that was extended by the Biden administration with the Biden administration saying that they know this is subject to a legal challenge. And in the, um, in the case that was in the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Kavanaugh in concurring to uphold that the last eviction moratorium said that he was only doing that because it was about to expire. Um, and so what I fear is if this goes back to the Supreme Court, um, we're gonna get a ruling which is gonna be very bad, which is gonna question the authority of the CDC uh, to set these rules. And that is gonna set us back in an international context and it's going to be very make it very difficult for other countries to trust what we're doing in the United States. Yeah, I can absolutely see after this that you, Glenn, and I are going to huddle and write an article about what CDC's powers and what Congress needs to do to make them more rational. They are kind of all over the place. Um, just two additional questions. You know, uh, Gene uh, talked about the European Medicines Agency and it upholding, you know, four vaccines. And my, my recollection, Gene, is that there was a um, major controversy in, in Europe and, and internationally 
um, because the, uh, the 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 European Medicines Agency excluded AstraZeneca um, manufactured in India, um, which was actually the COVAX vaccine. Um, so one of the questions is if we do have these international credentialing systems, which vaccines qualify? Um, in the United States, would it just be US FDA vaccines? Or would it be vaccines that are, are uh, given emergency uh, use listing um, by the um, uh, by the uh, World Health Organization. If it's in Europe, is it the European Medicines Agency? Another checkerboard. So, Jean, what do you think about that? You know, and I, that is, and it's a it's a really important point, and, and it is a huge practical problem. And I think it links it links also to what you were saying generally at, at the point you were making at the start, and for the question we didn't really really pick up. As well, that the that essentially that there is a, a terrible problem trying to resolve these types of issues entirely at individual state level or even individual block level when you are dealing with such fundamental questions, and that there does need to be, you know, greater and effective you know, liaison on these these things going forward. I mean, I think part of the problem perhaps relates to the fact that with some things. And this is perhaps understandable in a way that although even though they're working in an emergency situation, bodies themselves are following approval processes which are tried and tested in terms of almost like emergency situations. Um, and that those still take time. So that doesn't mean, for example, that other vaccines you know, going forward wouldn't necessarily be accepted. Yeah. It's just you... a sort of time deadline and delay in it. Um, but again, that exacerbates, the, as you were saying, about the checkerboard type. So yeah, and the qualifications. I mean, with the you know, the U.S., for example, FDA hasn't hasn't uh, licensed or or even authorized AstraZeneca vaccines. You know, would they qualify in the United States? It's an interesting point. One, just a, a quick lightning round, and then I'm going to um, uh, turn it back. We've talked about governments and regional blocks, like the European Union. Um, or, or one could imagine the African Union or others. Um, what about if, uh, and this is going to come up later, and I want them to be informed by legal experts, what if businesses do it, airlines do it, for example, um, private airlines, not not uh, British Airways, but just simply a private airline, Delta, United. Um, does that change the calculation? Um, anybody want to jump in here? Mara, what do you think? Sure, sure. I mean, you're you're sort of creating almost a private attorney general function. I mean, you're 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 tasking the the private industry uh, to do the tests that really ought to be controlled by government, and and that's the situation that we're in right now. That's why internally, domestically in the U.S., you're seeing hospitals and schools and businesses being tasked to do things that really ought to be in the control of government. And if we have privacy concerns, then certainly we should be looking for some kind of uniformity, which you are likely to get more of in a government mediated regime than a privately mediated regime. Glad I know what you yeah, think I would, of that. I would, no, I would add that I completely agree. And to me, the dystopia is a hundred different vaccine passport systems where I have to upload my information a hundred different times and learn about the privacy rules a hundred times. And that to me seems the worst of all worlds. Yeah, and, and which and which vaccine? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I've got a, I've got a dozen more questions, but we've totally run out of time. Uh, oh, I just want to um, thank um, Meryl, Glenn, and Jean um, for brilliant presentations. I wish we had much more time to be with you. Um, but now we're going to turn um, to another very important topic, um, which is the ethics. You know, uh, you know, good law and good ethics are both essential. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to my dear friend, Zeke Emanuel, um, who will uh, moderate this next session. Over to you, Zeke.